Today we are going to show you our process of finding and setting up camp and we're going to maybe show you some of the gear we've taken on our expedition for the inside passage as well. We've chosen a random day here in Alaska. It is raining right now so we're going to be getting all the tarps out, all of the stuff to make camp as comfortable as possible. It's about 4.30 right now. This is the time we start looking for somewhere to go. Um, but the process really starts the night before when we look at the charts, look at the maps and uh, try and eye up a place we might want to stay. Um, so there's somewhere around this area we're hoping to find. It's uh, just over 30 kilometers away, which is the right kind of distance. You might also notice we are using paper maps right now as opposed to the nautical charts. Those ran out in Ketchikan. These were uh, provided to us by a guy called Darren. So thank you for giving us access to those files. These are pretty good. So maps show more detail on land. So it can sometimes help us find things like rivers and creeks for water. Um, and we can see where some like steep cliffs are and where some uh, not so steep sections are too. The paper maps take up a lot less space. So it means uh, we can burn them as we go and uh, yeah, saves a little bit of space. So we'll keep moving. We are in a very cliffy area right now. So we're hoping we're gonna find somewhere a bit flatter, maybe in the next, uh, the next hour or so. Okay, we have found ourselves a potential campsite. We are just discussing whether this is where we wanna make our home. So it's about 12 degrees Celsius outside with a light rain, pretty cold but there is no reason why we can't have a nice dry camp. And the first thing that we have to check before we land is the landing. Uh, an ideal spot to land has very small pebbles uh, and it just so happens that this kind of fits that description. We kind of want to avoid uh, anything with oyster beds, uh, barnacles, barnacles suck, clams, um, anything that's cliff <laughs> as well because we're not climbers and uh, just so happens yeah this is a good spot one of the first things that we're gonna want to do as we go uh, and land on the beach is to scream skeg first reason uh, we don't want to destroy uh, our boats and just so happens that there are bears in the area so screaming skeg helps to remind uh, each other to uh, lift it up and also to uh, basically tell the bears to fuck off. Skeg! Skeg! Hello bears! We don't want no bears. Hoo just like that. Hoo After that, once we're landed, we might just move the boats a little uh, further on the beach. Um, and then uh, we'll go check out if there's anything in the forest, uh, any open area where we could uh, set up camp. How's it look? Looks amazing. We think we can make it work, people. Well, that's nice. There's a fucking cabin. This campsite is excellent. We also need somewhere that's uh, flat enough to walk up, but not too flat because we're going to be leaving at a low tide in the morning. Wow. So. We uh, are a little concerned if this is too flat that we'll have a long way to walk. So it's another thing we kind of check as we come in in sort of, usually if it's clearer we can see the bottom, but today we can't, but this is actually super flat. Might just involve a longer walk in the morning because we know this whole area which we had marked, it is actually quite a shallow zone. This uh, gray, darker gray around here uh, yeah, it means it's shallow, so it's something that we're considering as we're parking up here. All right, we leave the boats here. Tide's going out, so we don't need to move them. If we can hear some water, it's always good to have access to water. We're not sure if behind here there's going to be shelter or it's just cliff so we'll find out if we're going to camp here for sure or move on soon enough but always walk around with the bear spray on a new spot boys got the bear spray when we're looking for a campsite 
<laughs> Even got the, the bear spray on a finger, yeah. The hand. Found this. Cabbage. Forest cabbage. The bears like it, apparently. Gonna be loud. Fire in the hole! That's very loud. That's sick. <laughs> Don't hesitate to be loud. Ready for close range combat. Hee -hee! Hello, bears! Uh, this might be a bit cliffed out. Definitely some water. It's a nice spot, but I don't know if we can camp here. Can already, oh, ego! You can already see the uh, tidal flats over there. Yeah, what do you think, man? You might need to move on. I mean, it's a bit shit. Maybe over there it seems to be uh, that ridge behind the cliff. Oh, yeah, let's go check that out. This is why you gotta start looking early so you don't get stuck. It's, uh, it's 5.30 right now, so we have a bit of time. If this isn't good and we have to keep going, so be it. We have, uh, we have enough time to move on if need be. But we'll try this other side. Maybe uh, you can see some gaps in the trees already up there. So if we can find a way through, maybe in the corner, Eagle. get a bit deeper in the forest. Then uh, yeah, maybe we'll find some shelter. It's uh, a bit cliffy. It ain't great. Have to try and see if there's another way in. Ah, uh, it's opening up. Opening it up. It's gonna give a spot. Oh, it looks all right. Oh, yeah. I think we have a... Woohoo! <laughs> Thank fuck for that. Oh, yeah. It's always uh, good to be careful. Thank you. Oh, yeah. So... This will give us a fair amount of coverage from the rain and the wind. Do you see any uh, flat spots for you? Right over there. Plenty of trees for the so. hammock. Yeah, nice. So yeah, we can definitely camp here. So next, figure out where we're gonna make our base. We did it, man. Good job. Found a spot. Speaking of spots, oh, yes. do your GPS. Every day when you arrive to camp, you gotta make sure. Let the good spot. folks at home know that we are alive <laughs> and well. <coughs> okay. Now we just have to wait for the GPS system to trace us and then. Uh, our automatic emails will be sent to the fan. We've decided to set up our base uh, right here. So basically that's the tarp and the kayaks. And later on we'll go and set up uh, where we'll be sleeping tonight. So right here you have a perfect spot because you can utilize the 
this massive log for the back anchors and use the uh, kayaks as the front anchors. Keeps, so, our, yeah. keeps our kitchen a bit further away from where we're camping too, which is a good thing for the bear territory here. Keeps all the food away from where we're gonna sleep. Yeah, you don't want uh, any guests appearing at the, the camp. So. You can already see how quickly the tides dropped out. We like just lifted the front ends of our boats on the water and it's been like hardly even 10 minutes and they are dry. All right, we're gonna move the kayaks. We're gonna set up the top. So it's time-lapse time. Da, 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 da. Top is done. Now we've got a dry place to chill. We can then unload our own personal gear, chuck it under the top, and then we'll take our camping gear into the forest and go and make camp. Would you rate your campsite out of 10 today? Uh, I'd say it's about a 7 or 8. Um, fairly comfortable. There is a bit of a dip. I think we're good. Boom. 7 or 8, 7.5 out of 10. Yeah. My turn. Brilliant. What you would you rate uh, your setup? Uh, tonight, probably gonna come back with a paddle and just prop up this side. You see, it's got a few patches. This tarp is eight years old, so it's a bit stretched in places. So I have to come back with a paddle for that. I don't always have to do that, but today we do. So I'd probably give it a. Uh, I'm gonna be dry, so I'll give it a seven out of ten. It's. Uh, if it was windy and rainy, I would probably do a little bit more work on it. But because we're in the forest. The rain's coming down vertical. Uh, I'm not too worried about anything coming in the sides. Seven out of 10, best grade you've ever had. <laughs> I did a quick adjustment because I couldn't be bothered to go and get a paddle. Uh, you can see now it's nice and tight, no longer pulling. All I did was move this rope from up there and brought it down and pegged it below this uh, stump or whatever that is. So it just brought this corner lower. And now the rain is dripping off right here. So I don't have to bother with the paddle. Also, seeing as this is a special occasion that you guys are here, I thought I should probably just make the effort. I put the separator in on the top there, so it actually brings the bug net out a bit further. So if I was reading, that's often what I do. Uh, it gives me a bit more space in there. And I've put the firm arrest in as well, so you can kind of see what my cocoon looks like in uh, its proper form. So we uh, set up a tarp and uh, just wanted to show you guys what we did. Basically, basically we used uh, this massive uh, log as an anchor for the back. As you can see, it's fairly low so that uh, water doesn't have a tendency to kind of slip in by the sides. We used uh, these paddles uh, to direct the rope and then the boats as anchors. So it's always a, it's always a good idea to use every uh, material that you have. Uh, on that side, we didn't really need to uh, use a boat it was a massive trunk, uh, just perfectly set. So uh, yeah, it makes quite a nice little tarp. And uh, this is where we're gonna be uh, setting up our chairs uh, and cooking dinner. And we might have to just uh, 
undo this uh, before we go to bed so uh, to make sure that uh, the tide doesn't come and wash it away. Fucking hell, this is nuts. The tarp was in like a big space here without any, uh, any debris around. So that's all been washed in. So uh, that's the gist of it. Yeah, so we've got change under the tarp. We're dry now. Uh, you can see we've got the chairs out so we can be comfortable. That is very important and essential piece of gear right there. Pretty much all our kayak gear is from NRS. Uh, so the dry suits that you've already seen, buoyancy aids. Uh, inside mine, this string here is for my GoPro. So it's actually just a shoelace that I tie to the uh, GoPro mount and then keep it in my pocket so I can move it around. I got my spot device in this pocket here. There's a compass in there as well that I haven't actually had to use. Uh, if it does get real misty, uh, Nuka's got the GPS. Then in this one, I've got a knife and some electrical tape, which all I've really used is when my hands get real messed up. I can uh, tape them up. Spray skirt. Blue Dog sent us some spray skirts, which is awesome. Um, they also helped us out with some dehydrated meals. So thanks for that. And then I keep a tow rope, a tow line. I actually keep it in my cockpit because I've used that more just for tying the boats to a log when we stop for camp. I don't really need to be towing during the day. Um, so yeah, keep that there. Then uh, in here, the paddle, bending branches paddle. Uh, this one is the navigator. This one's awesome, the hand carved wooden blade. And then my spare paddle, usually on the back, but it is actually now over there holding the tarp up. As Nuka mentioned, we use the paddles to do that. Um, and then on the deck here, I keep the gloves, easy to grab for my hand gets, hands get cold. Those are from NRS2. Got the pump, and then either the charts or the maps, whichever we're using at the time, they go on front so they're easy to grab. So that's what's on the deck. Obviously water, sponge, coffee, and a chopping board, because it doesn't fit anywhere else. Then for my boat, in the front is where I keep all my personal stuff. So that's all my camping gear. I've also got some more clothes in here. So that's my toothbrush, toiletries in there, and all my camping gear and personal stuff goes in there too. My day hatch right here. So we decided I would carry all of the lunch. It just means when we stop for lunch, I grab this bag. It's got pretty much everything. Um, and then I just get a piece of uh, a tuna for each of us. And then I've also got my snack bag, uh, sun cream, some other things in the day hatch, but it's mostly the team lunch. And then in the back here is all the cooking gear. I have a duffel. These duffels are great, actually. The mesh bags. Um, yeah, so the gas, the uh, dishwashing stuff, cutlery, pots, pans, all of that um, is all in the back here. We keep it in one place because a lot of the gear can get damp. Well, when I wash it, obviously it's, uh, it's damp when it goes back in. So everything in there is okay to be damp. We separated the wet and dry stuff. All right, over to you. Whoop. Let's go check out my boat. My floating vest. Got my watch on that. Got my GPS here that I take out just in case we need to make sure. I got a few snacks on this side. I got to make sure that these snacks are out so that bears don't come and, you know, poke their nose around. Those are our snacks. I got my uh, VHF radio. I got my spot device, sunscreen, sun stick for my face. And that's about it. I had a knife at some point, but... Uh, what happens when you uh, drink whiskey uh, on a berg. So I uh, lost the knife, but- Check out the whiskey episode for where the knife yeah. gets lost. <laughs> so this is all my electronics, camera, uh, cell phone, everything like that. This is uh, Overboard, a great sponsor. These are amazing. Generally I have my uh, deck bag right in front here. That will have most of my clothing that I want to change right away and a few small items like a little book to take notes. Um, and that's that. So in here, you basically have another bag with some more clothing uh, just in case my stuff gets wet. I got my little towel, my soap. Got some pins, got some batteries. I got my sneakers here, which smell absolutely awful. 
Uh, usually I put my tent right at the end here and I push it in with my poles and then I'm able to slip in my chair, slip in the shoes, put another tarp, put my, uh, my um, yeah, put the tarp um, and then uh, I have my sleeping bag and my sleeping mattress right at the very top here. First things that I want uh, because those are the things that I'm gonna use to set up my little camp. Red bag, it's the Biff bag. Um, so, or we call it the Bob. So bathroom on beach. Uh, in here you'll have the toilet paper, a little shovel if ever we um, decide to go to the bathroom inside the forest. But in this specific case, we never really have to. Uh, we can go just out um, into the tidal area and do our business and then burn our toilet paper um, with lighters that are already in here. So this is a very very important item. This is the dry hatch as much as possible. It's all our food. Um, so as you can see, it's a bit, it's a bit mix and match. You know, there's no real order to these things. I try to have uh, breakfast and supper as close as possible, but you kind of have to dig through them. And I have these extra dry bags that I can just kind of stuff with the food that we're going to utilize for uh, for the night. And then once we're done, put everything back in the boat and start over the next day for breakfast. Uh, it's really important that the food stays in these hatches because the bears will find it. They will destroy anything. And seeing as it's pretty, there's a pretty good seal on this. There's no odors that are coming out. So this is a great boat. There's also my repair kit. Uh, right about here um, and that's that so a really important thing as well that I've got to mention uh, so we each keep an overboard bag in our cockpits this is where we keep our cameras so inside mine get the green off of it you can open it up and I have my camera inside another overboard bag I've got my phone which is actually in an overboard phone case too which is awesome um, and then I have the drone as well. That's the drone right there in that bag. So all of that is in between my legs at all times. It means if we see something incredible, the cameras are right there and we are not gonna miss it. So if you're wondering how we got all of these shots, uh, pretty much all of them were filmed from the comfort of our kayaks. Uh, just opening the hatch, uh, sorry, opening the skirt, grabbing our cameras and uh, yeah, we never miss a thing. Every whale gets watched and gets documented. So this is our camp right there. Hi Chris! Hi Nuka! Just down here where the seaweed is is where we parked up not so long ago. And you can see the tidal flats have really appeared. And uh, fortunately for us, because we're right near the end, tucked in here, we don't have too far to walk, maybe just over to that bit there in the morning which is maybe like what is that 100 meters not so bad the uh, whole bay is dried out so um yeah not too bad in the morning for us it's definitely something to consider when choosing a camp the uh whether it's high tide low tide what you're doing and at what time because you can really get caught out and get stuck with a very long walk fortunately for us We've not had any huge walks, but we have been keeping an eye on it. Um, the high tide is something to worry about, especially at night time. Depending when this episode will come out, you will uh, have seen what happens when you uh, get it wrong. And we'll probably move the kayaks right up over that log in the evening and then tie them down as well, because it's gonna be a high, high tide this evening, coming into spring tides. What's on the menu tonight, Nuka? So, uh, um, one of our sponsors, uh, Blue Dog Kayak, gave us some uh, dehydrated meals. So right now I'm just uh, hydrating um, a mushroom lentil uh, uh, spaghetti sauce. Um, we're gonna have penne instead of spaghetti. 
because they fit better in the boat. Oof. Um, and uh, yeah, so I'm just gonna let that hydrate a bit. And uh, I'm gonna start boiling some water, put the pasta in, and then uh, cook this afterwards. This nice little sauce. And it should uh, be pretty good. Gonna add some cheese, loads of them. Of course. Loads of cheese. And I must say, I added a bit more cheese because pasta without cheese is like a hug without a squeeze. <laughs> Nuka is the team chef, and while the chef is chefing, I use that time to uh, take a look at what we've done today, check out our mileage. You can see the big tidal area right here. And then every day I take trip notes of what we've done, record the mileage, and then just a few uh, thoughts and ideas of what's been happening. Uh, then another thing I do as well, every single day, once we finish, da -da -da -da, where is it? is record the wildlife encounters. This is the tally, you might see this come up in a few videos. So I'm keeping notes of all the wildlife we see on the whole trip. Gotta pack in the calories. You can burn a lot of energy. Vegetarian too. Very nice. A nice hearty portion of pasta. Lovely glass of red wine. Ah. Sounds like smells great. a fantastic meal. Oh yes. Mother it with Parmesan. Look at that. That's a good size portion right there, folks. If it's not hanging out the bowl, then it's not enough. Dinner is done. Usually while we eat dinner, we uh, often put a movie on, something we've downloaded um, at our last, uh, our last rest stop when we have Wi-Fi. Because Nuka cooks, that means I do the washing up. I either find a rock pool to do it, I go over to a creek or a river to do the washing up if there's one available or when it's raining like today um, I'll probably just do it under the tarp so I can sit here and chill and uh, enjoy the movie as well. So we showed you guys a bit of the salt life, a bit of the camp life, that's our day to day. Same again tomorrow. Same tomorrow. Whoop. Da 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 da